In this video, we'll consider a ladder on ground at the base leaning against a vertical wall. The vertical wall has friction and the ground has friction. The ladder has a mass, capital M, a length, capital L. At the base, the coefficient of friction is 0.45. At the wall, the coefficient of friction is 0.35. We want to determine how we can set up this ladder against the wall, how we can lean. Uh, with the minimum angle, the smallest angle that the ladder makes with the ground. So let's start with a uh, drawing over here on the left side. At the base of the ladder, there is a normal force that's vertical. The force of friction with the ground is attempting to hold the base of the ladder, prevent it from slipping away. We have MG, capital M, and the acceleration due to gravity would be the weight of the ladder, and that I draw a vector at the middle of the ladder. This is L over 2, distance away from the base. At the wall, there is a perpendicular force to the wall, FW, that's going to the left, and then the frictional force of the wall will attempt to hold the top of the ladder, prevent it from sliding down the wall. So there we have our starting drawing situation. Theta is our angle to the ground. So let's first write the torque equation for stability. And I'm going to choose an axis of rotation at the base of the wall. So at this axis, the normal force and the force of friction of the ground have no lever arm. So those torques are zero. They will not appear in the equation. The weight of the ladder is going to attempt to rotate the ladder around this axis in a clockwise direction. I'm going to take clockwise to be the negative direction. The force of the wall outward here attempts to move, rotate the ladder in a counterclockwise, that's positive, and the force of friction with the wall on the ladder attempts to also rotate the ladder uh, counterclockwise. So here comes our uh, equation for torque. Torque is force times lever arm with the condition that the force in the lever arm be perpendicular. So taking FW, FW would have sort of a line of action straight out like this. And to find the lever arm, I find a perpendicular distance back to the axis. So over on this side, we have L and sine of theta gives us this lever arm distance. So the force is FW, the lever arm, a perpendicular distance from the axis up to the line of direction of the force. That's L sine theta. For the force of friction at the wall, the force of friction of the wall acts up this way. I need a lever arm that is, again, perpendicular to this line of action of the force. And that's provided by the side that's adjacent to this angle theta. So we have F force friction of the wall, and the L cosine theta as our um, lever arm. Then for the weight of the ladder, capital MG, that's the weight. Down here, here's our line of action of the force. Here is our perpendicular distance. It's again adjacent to the angle. So the cosine function, L over 2 is the uh, hypotenuse of this smaller triangle, and L over 2 times cosine theta gives me this appropriate lever arm. And right away, I have canceled off the L's. There's an L in each term, so the uh, length of the ladder is not important. We'll get the same result regardless of the length of the ladder. But if you scan across here, FW, that's unknown. Theta, that's unknown. That's the real unknown that we want to solve for. The force of friction of the wall, that number is unknown. The mass of the ladder is unknown, and these cannot be canceled. G, we know the value, 9.8 uh, on the Earth. But how are we going to solve this one equation that has one, two, three, four unknowns? Well, obviously, we need some help. We need some other equations. So let's look at in the y direction. For the vertical direction, we have the normal forces upward. We have the force of friction of the wall, that's upward. Downward, we just have mg, the weight of the ladder. So there's our forces adding to zero in the y direction. To be stable, 
forces in the y direction have to add to zero. The torques have to add to zero. Now in the x direction, the forces have to add to zero to have stability. So we have the force of friction with the ground off to the right. We have the force of the wall on the ladder to the left. So I bring it in with a negative sign. And those add up to zero. So there's our extra help. Um, we also have friction. The force of friction at the ground is equal to the coefficient of friction at the ground times the normal force. <clears throat> and then the force of friction of the wall, coefficient of friction at the wall. <laughs> so again, the force of friction at the wall is equal to the coefficient of friction at the wall times the force the wall applies to that ladder. Um, that's the normal force up at that uh, position. So if we go down here just a bit farther, I'm now dividing up here every term by cosine theta. Divide every term by cosine theta. So sine theta divided by cosine theta, that generates the tangent theta. In the middle term, cosine theta divided by cosine theta, those cancel. And then mg over 2, and again the cosine theta cancels. So we're looking a little better, um, but we still have too many unknowns. So I'm going to aim to make substitutions where only FW is in each term. So we're on our way to achieving that. We already have FW here. And now in this um, middle term, I can replace the force of friction at the wall with mu W times F wall. So we've achieved FW in this second term. And now this mg, if we come back to this y equation, if I bring mg to the right side, mg can be replaced with the normal force plus force of friction at the wall. And then going further, the force of the normal force, I can replace that with force of friction at the ground divided by the coefficient of friction at the ground. That comes from this relationship. Fn, if I divide both sides here by mu sub g, Fn can be replaced with force of friction at the ground divided by the coefficient, coefficient of friction at the ground. And again, this force of friction at the wall, that's the coefficient of friction times their, the normal force at that place, which is Fw. So we're, we're, we're getting closer. A little bit more work here. The first two terms are unchanged, the last couple lines. Here, force of friction at the ground. This x equation, if I add Fw to both sides, then I see that force of friction on the ground can be replaced with Fw. And I've done that in this numerator. So now I've achieved an Fw in every term. And we'll cancel that off. So I have tangent theta mu sub w minus 1 over 2 mg and mu sub ground. I'm distributing the minus 1 half through the parentheses here. And again, Fw is being canceled all the way across. So 1 over 2 coefficient of friction of the ground minus, minus sign here has to be distributed. And the 2 comes underneath the coefficient of friction at the wall divided by 2. Let's move things such that we just have tangent theta and sorry, I've uh, neglected to shift up my page here. Um, so eliminating Fw, we get tangent theta, mu sub w, minus 1 over 2, um, coefficient of friction at the ground. We're distributing minus 1 half into the parentheses. And now keeping tangent theta on the left, I'm going to add 1 over 2 mu sub g to both sides. I'm going to add mu sub w over 2 to both sides. I'm going to subtract mu sub w from both sides. I have uh, two like terms here that both have mu w. This would be minus 2 over 2 mu w. So that those two terms can be combined. We get 1 over 2 mu g minus mu w over 2. And that is tangent theta. We were given the coefficient of friction for the ground and the wall. 0.45 and 0.35. So you ought to pause your calculator or pause your video now and use your calculator to calculate um, tangent of theta. 
1 over 2 times 0.45, that multiplication is in the denominator, and then 0.35 divided by 2, that's mu sub w over 2, and I came up with 0.936. Use your calculator and see what you get. Welcome back. Now tangent theta is 0.936, take inverse tangent of both sides, and we find that the minimum angle for stability is 43.1 degrees. 43.1 degrees. And this is a, uh, the formula up here is a reasonable result. It's a reasonable result. When we have this coefficient of friction at the wall, this friction is helping the ladder to be more stable. It's helping the ladder to be more stable. If tangent theta becomes a smaller number, theta becomes a smaller number, and we can lean the ladder at a greater tilt, um, smaller theta compared to the ground. Um, the mu sub w, that's helping hold up the ladder. Uh, so it's, it's reasonable from that, from that regard. If our coefficient of friction at the ground is higher, then this term will become a smaller value. And again, tangent theta would be a smaller number, and the theta value would be a smaller theta. And the latter can have a smaller angle with the ground and remain stable. So you could play around with this and put in your own coefficients uh, and see what uh, stability results from um, the conditions that you select. But we had a case here where we started off and it looked uh, bad. We had four unknowns and one equation. But we have this extra help for static equilibrium. In the y direction, the forces add to zero. The x direction, the forces add to zero. And we have friction at the two locations. We worked our way through eliminating variables, aiming to get to a, a place where we only have fw in every term, and other than these mu's that can be uh, numerically we put in values. So I hope that was instructive, uh, a little bit of algebra, some physics up here with stability. If you'd like to see other of these uh, tutorials, uh, websites physics.gpclements.com and astronomy.gpclements.com, there are lists of these videos that I have on YouTube. The site is free, the website's free, there's no registration. Um, hopefully you'll find some videos that you like, and uh, if you do like them, I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel. Again, ask your instructor if you have questions.